Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay, and in this video, I will be covering the Canon RFS 55 to 210 millimeter f5 to 7.1 IS STM lens. Now, for those rushed for time, let me just give you the skinny real quick. Yes, it is worth the money. Yes, it is a great option for the APS-C cameras, such as the Canon R50, R10, and R7, as it stands today. The optical quality is very good when considering the price point of this lens. The build quality is not very good. It's mostly plastic, but the lens is extremely lightweight, which is nice for travel and all day use, like at the zoo, for example. The autofocus is nearly silent for video, works really well for photography overall. Stabilization works excellent with 4.5 stops of correction, which is honestly remarkable on the Canon R50 as I used it. Um, if you use it on the R7, you can get seven stops of stabilization. So the bouquet rendering is also pretty solid, and thanks to the 29 millimeter minimum focus distance, you can get some really high quality close-up photography and video at 210 millimeter handheld, which is, you know, just very impressive. For those wanting more details, let's get into it. So basically what we have here is a $350 telephoto lens that has an effective range of 88 to 336 millimeter, as you can see here. So here's 55. Map to 210. At the time of this recording, there are only three RFS lens options with autofocus from Canon. So you have the 18 to 45 millimeter kit lens, which pretty much is standard, and the 18 to 150 millimeter, which I compared and reviewed here. And now we have the 55 to 210 millimeter lens option. All these RFS lenses can be used on the full frame Canon RF cameras as well, but the cameras will automatically switch to the smaller APS-C crop mode, dropping the overall resolution down. But it is nice that these will work, just so you know. So the lens is very lightweight at only 9.5 ounces or 270 grams, but on the cheap side, build quality wise, as you can see here, it is mostly plastic and lacks buttons and or switches for more control. The zoom feels really good, and the manual focus ring also is very smooth and buttery. Plus, it has the ability to be used as a custom function if you want in the camera menu. Now, looking at the front of the lens, we have a 55 millimeter filter thread, and this lens features a super spectra coating to help minimize ghosting and flare. Seems to work pretty good. Looking at the back, we have lots of plastic and not really much else to report. So the focus motor is an STM design and it works really good overall. It's fast enough to track moving subjects pretty well as long as they're not moving too fast. And it's very quiet, nearly silent for video. So I did some lab testing and this camera performed really well. Sharpness is good, you know, fairly good corner to corner. Distortion is really well controlled. All right guys, so here's what it looks like on the Canon R50. And if I zoom it out, you can see how far it goes extends a decent amount there and when you put it up to your eye this is what it looks like so looking at it from the side you could see if i turn this way and zoom in and out i actually usually lift my glasses up for this and put my eye right to the viewfinder uh, it will help just block out the light a little bit but hand holding you can see here it's very easy to use you can zoom it in one stroke you don't have to like do this you can actually get it in one continuous zoom like so so it does not come with a lens hood which is worth noting all right, so let's go through these lab photos really quick. So this is 55 millimeter F5, and you can see the sharpness is looking pretty good. It's not crazy sharp in the corners, but it's still acceptably sharp, and it does sharpen up when you stop it down. This is wide open at F5. So now we're looking at 70 millimeter. This is 100 millimeter. Now this is 135 millimeter, and I focused on the quarter. And now this is the same thing, but I focused on the dollar bill this time, so you can see the corner sharpness and stuff. It's very good. All right, so here we are at 55 millimeter. This is raw quality. And I just wanted to show you the raw quality so you can see the lens correction here. So this is what kind of distortion we're dealing with. Very, very well controlled, I would say. So moving on to 70 millimeter, let me just show you the distortion. So with a minimum focus distance of 2.3 feet or 70 centimeters, you can get 0.28 magnification, which for scale results in shots like this of the quarter in the lab. All right guys, so let's go through some real world photos here. Now I took hundreds of photos with this camera and lens, but I'm gonna just limit it to the ones that I think best represent, 
you know, what this lens can do in the real world. Like that is my goal, just to show like what this lens can do for you in the real world. So let's just get right into it. So I found one of those, you know, those, the backup mirrors, I guess you call them. So I just took a silly photo of myself. Now here, this is a really cool photo, I thought, because it shows you how you can get what's called telephoto compression. And you'll see what I mean here, because at this one, I'm at 72 millimeter, and there's not that much telephoto compression. But when you go to this one, now you can see how, like, what looks, it, it kind of like squashes the data together and gives you this really cool depth of field. And that's like telephoto compression. So I thought that was a good example. Now here, there's just a truck. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like when I focus on the building to the very right. So now I'm focused on the building on the very right, and you can see how the truck just butters out. I mean, that is that is really good background separation. The rendering is nice and smooth and creamy. We're looking at some butter. That's definitely some butter back there. Now here there was these weird ball things growing on this tree. So at, let's see, 55 millimeter here, and then at 210 millimeter here. And if I zoom in to 100%, you can see the detail. And again, it's just very, very good. This lens optically, especially in the center area, is nice and crisp. So I was impressed. Now, just a nail. This is a large nail hammered into a telephone pole. Background separation is really good. This mark over here, there was a piece of dust on the lens. That was my fault, sorry about that. A couple of photos have that in there, but that's not a problem with the lens. That was just my error, I had dust on it. Now here I just wanted to show you what it looks like shooting at brick, so you can see just a little bit of distortion. Now on the way to work I saw this cool duck. I'm also shooting through weeds, so you can see the weeds out of focus in the foreground. And this camera is just locked on the subject. It has not lost the subject once, which is incredible. This is really, really impressive, gotta say. All right, I wanna get a couple of photos quick. I mean, look at this, it's really good detail. Still excellent shots, I would say, of the duck. So here's just one of those cattails. And this is cool because you could really see the detail and the high contrast. It's, it's just hard for a lens to capture this accurately with the bright light on it, and you can see this Lens does a really good job. Now here's just another shot at 210, and the background was really far away, so I knew it would really blur out. So I just took this sample photo, and if you zoom in here, you can see how sharp it is. I mean, the detail is just incredible. Aimed down the street here, took a couple of snapshots. We got a Taco Express down here. Now this one, I just focused on this little street marker here that was on top of the fire hydrant. And I just wanted to show you how the background renders in an environment like this. So if this was someone standing there, you would, this would be a cool portrait, for example, you know what I mean? And the background would be nice and blurry. So that's why I took this sample photo, just to illustrate that a little bit. Now here is the building that's behind that red thing we were just looking at, and just to the right a little bit. Again, just showing you how this handles, and this high contrast area in the corner, you can see there's no chromatic aberration, there's no fringing or anything, looks really good. Now here's one at 55 millimeter. I did a bunch of 55 to 210 comparison shots. This is one of them, so here's 55, here's 210. So that is the real world range, which is remarkable. You can actually see there's somebody in there. Look at that. Now I just shot aiming at this brick wall. The paint was peeling back and I thought this looked really cool. Just some interesting masks that uh, somebody made out of wood, like funny faces. Now this is just a roof, this old clay tile roof I thought looked pretty interesting, like repeating patterns. Here's just one of a sign over in Chester. Now here is the train track. You know, they have the, the rail trail that you can walk on, and they give you these like cool fun facts. Sometimes you'll see on the side of the rail trail, so I just took a photo of that. And again, you can see the detail it captured is quite good. Now here I just took a shot of a fence out of focus, and it had like specular highlights on the fence, like bright spots. And when you're out of focus, those bright spots turn into bouquet balls, as you can see here. And the farther the bouquet balls are away, the larger they get. So I was shooting at an angle at the fence. Now I got the camera really low to the ground and I focused on some of these like big bolts on this bridge. And again, you can see up here, this is that fence again. And just look at how cool that looks, the rendering. Now here's one at the minimum focus distance and you can see just how sharp that is. There is a little bit of green fringing here. You can see just a touch. 
So here's one at 210 millimeter focused on this branch right in front of me in the center here. And now I switched focus to the truck in the background. Here's another version of that. This one I was focused on the branches and this one is focused on the sign. Here's just another one. This is a 55 verse 210 shot. So you can see that zoom range again. Here's one of the Chester sign. Here's a bird that was in the grass in front of me when I was uh, eating lunch. This would have been much better if I was lower to the ground then the background would look a lot better, but, but if I got out of the truck, I knew the bird would have flew away. So you get what you get and you don't get upset. Very, very close to the water level. So it blurred out the water in the foreground, which I thought looked really cool. Here's a landscape version of the same shot. And this is, again, it's kind of that telephoto compression effect where you get that foreground blur. It looks really good. Here's one of just a fishing lure stuck to the line. And I did edit this one a little bit, so it has a little bit of a vignette on it. Same thing with this one, I did edit this just a little bit. Now, I was actually recording with my Sony a7 IV and Zeiss 55mm f1.8 lens, uh, doing some testing, and I just took a photo of that setup with this lens. And look at how good that looks. I mean, that looks excellent. Now, here's another one looking down, and you can see this, the road in the background here just butters out. And this is at 135 millimeter. And you can see, as long as the background is far enough away and you're close enough to your subject, you can get killer background separation, which obviously I'm a big fan of. I'm constantly raving about it. Now here, this hawk was on the wire and I took a photo. Now this is cropped all the way in because I couldn't get that close to the bird. I was afraid it would fly away and it did fly away. <laughs> I then moved to the right and through trees, I was able to get this shot. This is what it looks like, not cropped and zoomed in a little bit, you could see here the detail. This is pretty darn good, uh, considering I was shooting through trees and I really wasn't that close to the bird. But right after I took this shot, the bird flew away. Now I just took a quick snapshot of Layla and I just wanted to show you if you wanna use this in a portrait environment, what you can get. Now this is just a snapshot, nothing fancy, but we were down by the river by the green bridge that I shoot at a lot. This is what it looks like. You can see the sharpness is very good. And here's just another one. I just put weeds in the foreground so you can see how the weeds render. And I thought they rendered very interesting how they look. Now this one, a bird just landed in front of me on a branch while I was going for a walk. So it's just a quick snapshot. I did pull the shadows up a little bit on the bird. So the bird was a little bit darker on the original photo there. Now this one is a raw file. These are straight off the camera. It's a really cool old Air Force plane in a park down the road. Now here I had the camera in rapid fire mode and I was just tracking moving subjects. Now these people were moving very slowly, they were walking, but as you can see, uh, shot after shot after shot, sharp, 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 they're all sharp. Not one was soft, so they all it nailed the focus at this slower speed. Now here I got the camera low to the ground at 210 and I focused as close as I could get to the grass. That foreground blur and background blur you know, results in that nice layering depth of field. And this is like nothing special, it's just grass. If there was a bird sitting there, like how cool this would look with that foreground blur and background blur. Now this dude was on a roll, a, a powered a skateboard and he was going fast. He was probably doing, I would say at least 10 miles an hour, maybe 15. And you can see here, again, I was rapid firing in continuous autofocus mode. And they were for the most part sharp. This shot here was a little bit soft but then it recovered, got a little sharper, sharp, sharp, and not too bad. So I just had one or two that were a little bit soft, but overall it kept up with that moving subject, which I was pretty impressed with considering the cost of this lens. Now here's another one. I just wanted to show you a 55 versus 210, and this is a cell tower, and they added some new antennas up there. I'm guessing they're 5G antennas or something. I don't know. But anyway, look at this detail. This is really good. And now I went down to the green bridge and I took a couple of snapshots. This is raw quality. I didn't do anything to this photo. It's at 210 millimeter. It's a pretty cool frame. Now here's another one. There was just a lock. Somebody stuck there. So I focused on the lock. Now this shot I think looks really good. There was a guy down here and just the cannon colors. I mean, beautiful. Now this guy was fishing down below and you can see what that looks like. There's 55 all the way to 210. 
Ooh, he's got a fish, I think. Nah, uh, maybe not. Now this was at 55 millimeters. So here's a similar shot, but this time I was at 210 millimeter. And now I can zoom in and you can actually see this guy a little bit more detail. So I focused on the master lock here. And I just wanted to again show you this layering depth of field. Here's one looking up one of the beams. See all that rust in there? I just stuck the camera in the beam and aimed up. And here's one more of a tractor. This one I did add a little bit of a vignette. I uh, added a little bit of uh, vibrance as well, as you could see some shadows and stuff like that. But if I zoom in, you can just see the uh, detail there is pretty good. Now this is at ISO 1600. So overall, the video footage looks really good and the focus is very quiet and smooth when transitioning, as you can see here. Yeah, this works excellent. The optical stabilization on this lens works excellent and provides 4.5 stops of correction when used on the R50 or the R10. In addition, when you combine it with a sensor stabilized camera body like the R7, you'll get an effective seven stops of stabilization correction. That is incredible. Check out these clips of me recording video testing out the stab using the optical stab only and then the special stabilization mode, which adds some extra digital stabilization. It does crop in a little bit, you know, but the crop will give you more telephoto reach, which can be an advantage in some cases. If you're trying to get a wider view though, it does cost you a bit of a crop. I'm just testing that active again. Now this is at 210 millimeter and I'm using the active video mode right now. And you can see that bird there. Literally, it almost looks like I'm, I have this thing on a tripod. So here's regular auto video mode, so it's not cropped in as much. Um, stabilization still works really good, but not as good as active. So at the end of the day, this lens is very affordable and offers an excellent range for portraits, landscapes, and travel in particular, I would say. A really great option for going to the park, zoos, or on a hike, for example, because it's so lightweight, you really won't be burdened, you know, carrying this around all day. It's, it's not that much of a burden, you know? Overall image quality is great and the range is huge. So I would certainly consider picking up one of these lenses for your telephoto needs if you have a crop factor camera, such as the Canon R50, R10, or R7 at the time of this review. I'm fairly confident Canon will come out with higher quality RFS lenses at some point in the future. You know, we're waiting for Sigma and Tamron to enter the game. Nobody really knows when or when that might happen, but it is what it is. Now, of course, you could look at the full frame RF lenses if you're looking for better quality, but they are going to be larger and a lot more expensive for the most part. But it's great to know that you could use those lenses on your Canon crop factor cameras as well. All right, guys, if you could please do me a solid and hit that thumbs up button, I would really appreciate it. And please subscribe if you'd like to see more reviews like this in the near future. That about wraps up this video. So thanks for watching and I will catch up with you next time. Take care.